how would you, you help you with that design? How would you help with that design? You first, first, first. How would you help with that design? Well, it's a good question. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Hey there YouTube, the Dapper Dinosaur here. I'm back for some Bad Creationist Geology. But before we get into that, I want to say thank you to Bermudasaurus for his wonderful fan art. Remember, if you want your fan art featured on this channel, you can tweet it at me or send it on Discord. Enough preamble, let's get into the geology. Now the interesting thing is when you look at some of these layers, there's a, a, a sediment which is composed of sand that's been welded together or cemented together with quartz, forming a quartzite, it's called the heavy tree quartzite, and can you see it forms various layers and you can see that the quartzite has got these cross beds in it indicating that it was deposited under flowing water uh, and uh, that's the thickness of the, of the, uh, of the uh, strata uh, and uh, this little diagram indicates something as to how it forms. Man, I'm learning a lot making this video. I just looked up the Havitree quartzite and while it's true that it was deposited in a high energy environment, there is no evidence that that was a flood. Instead, it was more likely a continental shelf, and much of the crossbedding was the result of tides, which at this time were significantly stronger than they are at present. This was interrupted by periods of relatively high energy but not terribly violent water flow, probably from rivers. So again, not a flood deposit. So if we look at the, the uh, there's three layers shown here, but if we look at the one in the middle, it indicates that these, these uh, sedimentary layers, they can be anywhere between one meter, that's three feet, anywhere between one meter uh, and, and 30 feet high, uh, thick, which is an enormous amount of sediment to be deposited. No vertical extent of deposition indicates a flood. It could be 42 miles high, and that doesn't make it a flood deposit. That's not how it works. So that's the first thing. There's a lot of sediment which has been brought in, and, uh, and for it to be brought in, uh, and it's amazingly, the geologists... Uh, describe it as being water deposited and so that means the water would have covered a huge area to be such so energetic to bring this material in. Yeah, water covering a large area is what we call a sea. They exist. Uh, and you can see the how the uh, cross beds come down in a nice S shape. Uh, the, can you see that? But you can see some of the beds, which is a little diagram, it's a cartoon, some of the beds actually come up and they're turned over. Can you see those ones? They're turned over towards, the, um, towards your right-hand side. They're, they're turned over. And that is, they're called recumbent beds or overturned beds. So what it, it indicates is the water was flowing through so rapidly, depositing the sediment, that the water was tipping the beds over. But if this whole deposit were just the result of a single event characterized by rapidly flowing water, then all the beds would be recumbent. But they aren't. That's where we get into the smooth S-shaped crossbedding as a result of tidal action. So we'd look at this heavy tree quartzite. It was deposited from very wide flowing rivers. Yeah, the recumbent beds probably were deposited by widespread rivers, but the other parts were just sediment rolling downhill along with a steep continental shelf. So you got a lot of water flowing across the countryside. It was delivering an abundant amount of sediment into the area to be able to deposit such thick Thick, uh, thick layers. Uh, the, the, it was a huge, flat, shallow, subsiding basin in which it was depositing. And so the water level was increasing. Yes, land uplifts and subsides. And water levels vary, mostly with the overall climate of the planet. That's not evidence for a global flood. The basin was subsiding, which is another way of saying that the water level was increasing and uh, as, as the sediment was filling it up. No, the land was sinking relative to its distance from the center of the Earth. That's not the same as the water level going up relative to the water surface's distance to the center of the Earth. Land sinking and water rising are not the same thing, Taz. Now go play with your blocks and remember to share. And that was high energy water currents. This is just out of a secular paper that you pick this stuff up. And uh, the water currents initially, they were reversing backwards and forwards to start with, and then as the sediment was deposited, the water became just flowing in one direction. And uh, so you'd think with such a high energy deposit, you know, that this would cover a large area of, of, the, of the continent, and indeed it does. There's actually a number of, of uh, sedimentary basins in the area. You can see the Amadeus one in the middle, 
but there are other basins scattered around. Uh, and the reason why they're scattered is because the intervening sediments have been eroded away. So these are remnants. And, and uh, uh, geologists are now thinking that there was once what they called a super basin in the area. They've given it a name called the Centralian Super Basin. Uh, and this would have been deposited early in the flood as the floodwaters were rising. Then why aren't they flood deposits? Seriously, they're just not flood deposits. We know what those look like, and it's not that. And so we do see the, the, these, these evidences around global catastrophe uh, and uh, evidence of, of mega catastrophe on the Earth. We do in fact see a lot of evidence for various catastrophes, but none of them are a global flood and mega catastrophe. And there's a lot of uh, uh, interesting stuff. Uh, for example, here's another one that was on the front cover of the Australian geologist. You can see a fellow that's standing alongside what looks like a big, thick column. Can you see that? And uh, he, he's standing with his back against some sandstone layers. And he's standing on uh, something on the bottom, which is actually a volcanic rock. And uh, this is sandstone layers. This is a basalt base. And this is a sandstone column. And uh, it, it, this, again, points to mega catastrophe. So you've got the sandstone layers. It's been deposited by water. And, and while it was still soft, you have the basalt, which is intruded at the base. So the basalt is a volcanic rock, which is hot and uh, really, really hot. And as a result of that, it, it, um, it heats up the water at the bottom of the sandstone and the water circulates. Maybe it even boils and it produces these, uh, this sandstone column as a result of the movement of the water. And there are a number of columns that are found, again, an evidence of mega catastrophe. Okay, so let's just say Taz here is correct. Why does an igneous intrusion into an unlithified sand deposit causing a pillar mean a global flood? Seriously, we're now at the point where Taz here is just pointing to a thing that happened on our water, no matter what it is, and saying, hey look, flood! You know, one of the guys, a very famous uh, Andrew Mile, he's a sedimentologist and uh, written lots of material uh, and uh, a stratigrapher. Uh, he's written an article just recently, when was it, 2014, and he's saying we need a new approach to uniformitarianism because of the disconnect. See, the, the, the geologists are realizing this idea of uniformitarian is not working. It's not news that strict uniformitarianism isn't current in geology, and hasn't been for like a century. But that does not help a worldwide flood or young Earth. Seriously, why are creationists often more than a century out of date? The disconnect between those working on the modern and the ancient record. Charles uh, Hutton and Lyle said we've just got to use the modern and apply that to the ancient. And here's these people working in sedimentary stuff. They've been doing it all their lives. They're saying there's a disconnect between the two. The modern doesn't seem to describe the ancient. Yup, Earth has changed. That's why some rocks that form now couldn't form 3 billion years ago, and vice versa. But what no one is saying is that that lends any credence to a worldwide flood 4,400 years ago. Because we know for a fact that didn't happen. And which anybody, and that's what biblical geologists have been saying for decades. They've been, saying that, and they've been saying it since the time of Lyle. The scriptural geologists have been saying it. And they're saying it won't work. And the Bible's accurate, so this, what you're proposing is not right. No, they've been pointing at things and screaming flood like a toddler who just learned the word dog and doesn't realize that it's not a general word for animal and so calls everything with four legs and fur dog and then gets angry when corrected. That's the level so-called scriptural geologists are on. They will point to structures that have nothing to do with a flood or that cannot possibly have been formed in one and say, flood! and refuse to look any further into the matter. And there's a reason all of them work for places like Creation Ministries International or Answers in Genesis. Places where being wrong doesn't matter as long as it sounds good to the misguided faithful who shovel money at them. It's because if results did matter, they'd be out of a job almost immediately. And here are these people, you know, a hundred years later, uh, was it 1830, 1930, so it's over 150 years later, who uh, are recognizing that it doesn't work. For completely different reasons than what Taz here thinks, though. Next, he takes nearly a minute and a half to say granite is supposed to form slowly. It was so boring and repetitive that I literally fell asleep at my computer while listening to it to write this script. But you know, there's a, a, a new um, 
articles have been published recently, new researchers, this Clemens, uh, he wrote an, uh, an article in a whole theme of the Geologists uh, Association of London. He said, granites and granitic magmas, strange phenomenon, new perspective on some old problems. Yep, the paper puts forward the possibility that granites form rapidly, as in over thousands of years rather than millions. This doesn't really help young earth creationism though, as it still means nearly all granites are far older than the universe is supposed to be. One thing about geologists, uniformitarian geologists, there's no shortage of work because the old problems persist and they never seem to, to be able to solve them. Except, geologists aren't strict uniformitarians. They're actualists, and they do routinely solve problems. The complaint that there are still open problems in geology is just the complaint that science hasn't discovered literally everything that could possibly be known about rocks. Humans aren't gods, and they don't get to just know everything by hitting on a broadly accurate model. Anyway, that's where I'm going to leave it for today. This is a bit of a shorter one, but the next one will be a little bit longer, and it should be the final episode. I hope you really enjoyed this, and if you did, let me know in the comments, hit like, and if you're not already subscribed, why don't you go ahead and subscribe now, and don't forget to hit the bell icon so you're always notified when there's more Dapper Dino content. I'm the Dapper Dinosaur. Thanks for watching. But before you go, I'd like to give a special shout out to all my channel members and my patrons on Patreon, especially the $20 and above patrons and members. Ben Tovind, Ian Chen, Chris Love, Henry Hutanen, and Bob Knob. Your support allows me to keep making these videos, and without it, I would have to stop. If you're not already a channel member or a patron, there are links in the description for how to join either on YouTube or on Patreon if you like. But if a monthly donation isn't right for you but you'd still like to help out, there are a number of ways you can do so. First, every like, share, and comment on any of my videos really helps me out with the algorithm. And second, if you'd like a more concrete and monetary way to help out, there is a merch store linked in the description as well as an Amazon wishlist. I'm the Dapper Dinosaur. <laughs> How would you tell people that this is? You first, first, first. How would you decide this? Well, interesting question. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know.